I want to talk to you about how the policy is structured, how much do I have to pay, do I have to pay the rest of my life, because these are questions that I get constantly. And it is, a lot of these questions come obviously, well, it doesn't matter. Every agent has a little bit different opinion on it. And so I am going to give you my take on it, even within the infinite banking world, we see that there's a little bit of difference in opinion. But when you set up a policy, so first of all, um, when you set up a policy, you have to make sure that that policy is going to be affordable. Worst case scenario, all hell breaks loose, you can afford that policy. Because if you can't afford it, we didn't do you any justice by creating a policy that has to lapse or you have to cancel because you don't have the money or whatever. If you do not get past that break even point, and so if you've read Farming Without the Bank, you understand that your break even point, the point where you, the amount of money that you put into the policy and the, at the point where your cash value equal each other, you will see that that is your break even point. When you get to that point, if you cancel the policy, you didn't lose anything. But if you cancel the policy before then, you lost money to buying death benefit, right? Because some of that money goes to death benefit. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that when we set that policy up, it is worst case scenario, essentially. Now, I had a guy call the other day. He had been working with another agent, and that agent was pushing him into a policy twice the amount of what he was comfortable doing. And the agent said, no, nope, I think this is what you need to do, X amount of money. Well, why? Like, we can always start more policies, start slow. But what the agent failed to ask is, is he gonna be buying land? Is he gonna be buying equipment? Do they wanna buy cows? Do they have kids yet? These people didn't have kids yet. Well, hello, if you don't have kids yet, that's just another added expense. I even go as far as to say, are you married? Are you dating? Are you getting engaged? Because let's be honest, women are not cheap. We want a house. We want things, right? We might not want to live in a shack. Um, sorry, my dog is in here chewing on something. Um, we might not want to live in a shack. And so those things are going to cost money. Well, we don't want, there. that's going to change our income. What if we have a baby and there's complications and there's hospital bills and we have to think about those things. So when we set up a policy, we want to do it so that it's comfortable. Because why? We want to pay that the rest of our life. Yes, until the day you die, ideally. Now again, if you have read this book or you've read this book, you will see on my illustrations in my case studies that the, the premium is not the same every year. Eventually that premium will go down. So what might start at like 10,000 a year eventually is gonna go down to 2,500. So we don't have 10,000 that has to go down every single, or 10,000 that has to be paid until death. We maybe have 2,500 that has to be paid until death. So think about the fact that even today, even today, $2,500 is tough, right? If we're setting up a policy and you're like, gosh, $2,500, that's like worst case scenario premium, okay? But $2,500 in 30 years from today or in 20 years from today or in 40 years from today is not going to feel like $2,500 today. So, we have to keep that into perspective. If you guys have read Nelson's book, Warehouse of Wealth, you will see that he talks about his premium to a life insurance policy that he had with State Farm. Bare bones life insurance policy, I think it was $388 a year. I think that was his premium. That was a lot of money 50 years ago. That is not a lot 
lot of money today. And so we have to keep that into perspective. Now, how is the policy structured? Because this is important. If you have a $10,000 policy, or if you have a $100,000 policy, or a $50,000 policy, it ultimately does not matter, okay? Because there are essentially two parts to the premium. One that buys death benefit, the other one that puts money to cash value. You only have to pay the one that buys death benefit. So all, not all, most policies are going to be structured where 75% of your money is going to go to cash value. So that means only 25% has to be paid every year, plus a little bit of the cash value amount, okay? So if it's $2,500, if it's a $10,000 policy, $2,500 has to be paid worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, all hell breaks loose, 2,500 bucks has to be paid. That can be paid monthly, it can be paid annually, it can be paid semi-annually. We can borrow cash value to pay for that. I've done it. You guys, I have done it all to save my first policy. Because I was like, oh, this is fantastic. I'm gonna quit my job. Everybody's gonna think this is great. This is the best thing since sliced bread, right? Well, not so much. Not everybody thought this was the greatest thing in the world. And so it took me some time to get going and build my business. So I've had to borrow cash value to pay for my premium. I have had to switch it from annual to monthly. I have had to pay just the minimum and then I can add the rest later because the premium is flexible. We can add, we can pay just the 2,500 and then we can add the rest throughout the year up to 10,000, right? Doesn't matter. If it's a $40,000 policy, 10,000 goes to death benefit, 30,000 to cash value, okay? So you get access to whatever that cash value is, you're gonna have access to that money in seven to 10 days, depending on the company. Some companies are 30, some companies are 90, I think. Um, most are within 30 days company that I write most of my stuff with is seven to 10. So we are turning around using that money immediately. But I get these questions a lot because when you're going to another agent and you're looking at what I have to do, we have to make sure that we understand there is flexibility. The reason that I use the company that I use for the majority of my business is because they have the most flexibility among any mutual company out there. Companies have all these rules about how premium has to be paid. As a farmer and a rancher, you do, or whatever you're doing in the egg industry, or even if you're a business owner, we don't know what the hell's gonna happen in the next year. I mean, look at last year all the rain, all the snow, mother nature did not cooperate and it started early. So if we didn't get a crop in, well, how am I gonna pay for that? If cattle prices went down, how am I gonna pay for that? If I lost a land lease, how am I gonna pay for that? And we might have to just do the minimum one year and then we might be able to catch up. We might not be able to catch up just depending on the situation again. There's a lot of variables in there. But nonetheless, you need a company that is going to be flexible and not do some sort of averaging and all this other stuff that companies do. But when we look at a policy setup, it should be comfortable. It should be comfortable worst case scenario. It should be comfortable to fill it full. I am not an agent that is gonna push you into this big, huge premium and it is going to be stressful because we need it, we can just start more. It's not a big deal. Just start another one. As long as you haven't lost insurability, we're okay. But when you look at both of these books, if you guys have not gotten these, I'm serious, your answer is in there. I'm not just trying to peddle books. If you have not read these, please, please start your new year and educate yourself. In here, the numbers go down. You can see 
that we started at 100,000 and it goes down. Don't be alarmed by the $100,000 premium. Oh gosh, just take a zero off. And I talk about that in the book. And yes, read the first half of the book. Don't just jump to the numbers. Read the first half of the book, it's super, super important. But you will see that we want to pay premium until we're dead. Why not? That's when the policy, real, the cash value really, really starts to get awesome and it starts to double and triple and we've got all this money. So for example, in this illustration that I'm on here, if we put in at year 30, we're putting in $22,000 of premium, okay? Cash value increased by $131,000. You have to think about that. We put in $22,000 of premium and cash value increased by $131. It's all relative to the size of your policy. But why would we stop putting money in at that point? Can we sell land to the kids? Can, are we, do we have cash rent coming in? Because guess what? If you've done this and you have money to retire, you don't need to worry about the fact that you don't have any money because you're not farming. Because we've done things a little bit differently. So if you have not looked at these numbers and they don't make sense, um, if you've not looked at them, looked at them. If you've looked at them and it doesn't make sense, I hope that that helps a little bit. And this is all stuff that we go over in our first meeting too. So don't like, this is like, we get all these questions answered, how this policy works, the structure of it, how much goes to cash value, how much goes to death benefit, how much is available, where the MEC line is, all that stuff. And I don't talk about the MEC line in my books. But guess who does? Mr. Nelson. He talked about, he talks about it in his book. So you're going to want to read this book as well so that you can understand what that MEC line is. I hope that that helps understand that we've got some flexibility in that policy and that we want to pay it till, we're, till we pass. Now, I did have this question the other day too, is can you explain to me, I feel like I'm throwing money away because I don't get access to all of my money right away. So for example, if we have a $10,000 policy, or let's just use 20, because I think that this question came on a $20,000 policy. He has it set up with another agent. So 5,000 going to death benefit, 15,000 is gonna go to cash value. That $5,000 going to death benefit, he feels like he doesn't have access to that money. And he feels like he's kind of in a Dave Ramsey situation where he's just throwing it away. Well, we don't have access to it today, but every year that we pay, we have a little more access and a little more access and a little more access until we break even. Is there a cost to doing business? Absolutely. It is no different, and Nelson talks about it in his book, that you have to put up some money. You have to put up some capital to start a business. And that is what this is. We are putting up some capital to buy death benefit. It's a death benefit policy. After that break even point, that break even point, then we are making, we're, we're always making more money. But until we get there, there's going to be a cost for the death benefit. We can't have our cake and eat it too. You can't just start a business and make a profit year one. So you, we have to get past that. This is not a get rich quick scheme. And you will see, if you've read Nelson's book, you will see that uh, he compares a CD to a life insurance policy. The CD will outperform the life insurance policy for about, I think it's 13 years. I'm gonna look in here real quick. Sorry, you're 16. The CD has outperformed the life insurance. After year 16, no, I don't know how Nelson compared this. I don't know how he structured his policy in this book. But if, I'm sure not as aggressively as we did, because he, he wasn't doing the, he wasn't doing a 75-25 split. Um, but until you're 16, after that, the life insurance policy wins. Why? Because of the dividend. That is super important because it is mutual. 
So you are going to want to look at page 45 in Nelson's book if you've not, just to try to understand that we have to put up some capital. There is some death benefit cost to that. What is the MEC line? The MEC line is it's MEC, Modified Endowment Contract. And to put it in English, because there's like some big long formula about how it's figured. So to put it in English, the MEC line is when cash value, this is cash value and this is death benefit. When cash value gets too close to death benefit, the government comes in and says, oh, we're gonna tax you on all the growth. So we don't want to cross that line because every as long as we stay underneath that line, the all the cash value grows income tax free. Okay, it's like a Roth IRA. We're not paying any income tax on anything. When we go to use it and borrow it and take it, and well, when we go to borrow it, there's no income tax on that. If we cross the line, now we're taxed on all the growth and we have to claim that as income when we go to use it. We set that MEC line depending on how much money we want to put into the policy. So if it's 10,000 premium, the MEC is 10. If it's 20, it's 20. So however much we want to put in, that's where that MEC, is, that's where that MEC line is set. Now, that used to not be the case. The government came in in the 80s and said, uh -uh, all you millionaires are sticking money into these things and it's all growing income tax free. So we're going to change that. So they did and they created the MEC line. So that is why we usually have more than one policy. And that is the reason, James, that Nelson had 49 life insurance policies, is because he would fill one up to the MEC line and then he would go get another one. And he had them on himself and his family and business partners and um, all those good things because there he had some insurable interest in other people. So we want, to make sure that we don't cross that line. Now, it's not the end of the world if we do under certain circumstances, but ideally, the goal is to not cross that line so that everything grows income tax-free. We get to use it income tax-free. And that is the benefit of the life insurance. So what happens is in my book, you're gonna see that we put a bunch of money in and then we decrease that amount of premium going in. The reason that premium starts to decrease is because we hit the MEC line and we can't put any more money into cash value. So now all we can pay for is the death benefit portion of the policy. So at some point we just have to stop putting the full amount in and then the premium decreases. So if you guys have not read these or if you've read them and you have not really looked at the numbers, look at the numbers. Nelson talks about the MEC line in his book, he talks about the capital to get started, and it is such a good book. I have a bundle, so you can get one of these with Nelson's, so you could get both of these at a discounted price if you want. So if you go to farmingwithoutthebank.com, you can get the bundle. All right, have a good one.